Well, gentlemen, this morning, I, I just really felt led to, uh, to speak to you about something that's complicated and dark. And it's the word shame. At different times of our life, we, we've all experienced shame. Um, and, and these kind of words come to mind. Uh, we feel ashamed. We've been shamed. Uh, that was shameful. We're filled with shame, covered with shame, shameful acts to their own shame. Shame on you. Filled with shame. They have no shame. They'll be put to shame. Shamefully. You should be ashamed of yourself. That was shameless. You see, the word is used all kinds of ways. And uh, and a reminder, just uh, for those of you who are listening, if you haven't already, just maybe for this season, silence your mic so there's no distractions. Um, so we can just all listen without uh, hearing the rustling and all. Good job. But But you see, the word shame has played a lot of role in our life at different times. By definition, uh, shame is a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. You see, shame is associated with, I have done something wrong. Shame is, shame is associated with, guilt because I feel guilty about doing something wrong. So I'm ashamed of myself because the guilt is upon me. And so guilt and shame are usually pretty highly connected. And of course, guilt, if it's really God honoring guilt, it has to do with wrong behavior, guilt, and shame. I've heard people say, I just live in shame all the time. Why? Because I feel I, I'm just doing what's wrong. I just feel like I'm a failure. I just feel like I'm doing what's wrong over and over again. I, I make such horrible mistakes. I just, I just feel the weight of my guilt, the weight of my sin, the weight of my wrong behavior, and I just feel the shame. Uh, we've all felt shame at different times of our life. Yeah. And I look at the times in my life where I've where I felt shame. Uh, shame has always had to do with poor choices, wrong behavior. I remember uh, uh, the Lord was convicting me of some sin in my life that I had to get right, but I was I was too ashamed to admit it. I was I didn't want to face it. I I didn't want to make it right. I. I just was too ashamed. I, I didn't want it to even come out of my mouth that I'd done something like this. But Jesus was saying, no, Dave, I want you to clean up your act. I want you to deal with this stuff. In other words, you've heard me use the expression, the dark cloud removal. Well, he wanted to, to take the dark cloud over my head because it was, it was this mantle or this cloud of shame and this cloud of guilt. And, and I knew I was guilty. And uh, I, I know that when I... I take steps to make amends. I take steps to apologize. I, I take steps to make things right and make restitution. And you know, the, the Lord has a wonderful way of, if we confess our sins, as it says in 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So there's something about coming to the Lord and getting things right it says even that he removes the guilt of my sin, the guilt, the, the, the sense of I am a wrongdoer. I've blown it. I deserve to be ashamed. But it talks about he removes the guilt of my sin and, and then I don't have to carry that shame because it's in Christ that I am free. It's in Christ that I, that I, I find freedom. And um, some of the other words associated with shame are disgrace embarrass, disrepute, dishonor, humiliated, shameful, right? 
And, and so, so, so these are the kind of words that when we, when we've lived with an addiction for a long time, and of course, so much of the addiction is, is driven by secret. So much of the addiction is we, we hide and we, 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 we try to posture on the outside, everything's great, and we live this lie. And, and then the, the shame builds, the disgrace builds. We don't want to talk about it because we'd be embarrassed of the things that we've done. And, and, and we don't want a reputation tarnished. So we, so we keep in the lies, we, we keep in the secrets, we keep in the, the behavior because if we bring it out, we'll just be humiliated. But there's something about dealing with my shame and dealing with my guilt that begins to release things. So many of you I can point to and, and say, oh my goodness, you don't walk in shame anymore. You don't walk in shame anymore. Maybe some of these words are true of you because the opposite of shame and being ashamed are words like this honored. You know, I've had the privilege to talk to some of the wives of men who are a thousand days or more clean. I remember the, the, the woman who celebrated the hundred days clean with her husband and then celebrated the one year clean with her husband and, and, and is so proud of him. And I respect the effort he's put in honored. Another opposite of shame is admired. Instead of being ashamed, you're admired. Um, you're respected. Maybe that's one of the most precious ones because the opposite of shame and embarrassment is I can hold my head high and I'm respected and, and not in the sense of holding it high like I'm proud because we know that, that the things we've done wrong and, and, and the mistakes we've made with our addiction have separated us from God and from people and, and even ourselves. We don't like who we are. But when we, when we go in the direction of, of coming clean, we go in the direction of, of confessing our sin, we go in the direction of, of renouncing our sin and, 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 and asking God to deal with the guilt of my sin, and he forgives us of our guilt, then the shame starts to go because there's, there's less of these things hammering us down with consistent wrongdoing. And we lose that painful feeling of humiliation. We start to have a little air in our chest that, that maybe we can live righteous, maybe we can live right, and we, we become honored, we become admired and respected and revered and, and going so far to have a good reputation and even highly regarded and praised. A couple weeks ago when the men that were a thousand days or more clean shared, there wasn't arrogance, there wasn't pride, there was a lot of humility. But how many of you felt in your hearts, man, I'm proud of those guys. Man, I respect those guys. I admire those guys. I honor those guys. They're highly regarded. Why? Because they owned their sin. They owned their wrongdoing. They went to the Lord. They confessed their sin. And they said, Jesus, would you remove the guilt of my sin? The guilt is the weight of my wrongdoing that causes the shame. You see, see, the wrongdoing causes the guilt because we know it's wrong. And the Holy Spirit convicts us that it's wrong. And so what happens is the wrongdoing causes the guilt and then causes the shame. And I live under that shame, that sense of deep humiliation because I'm aware of my wrongdoing. And of course, people that disregard the Holy Spirit's conviction and, and just blast ahead, they live shamelessly. And, and they are, end up being filled with shame because they have shameful acts. It's part of what they are. They've just embraced wrongdoing and, and they just keep going in the direction of, of their addictions. And their addiction, they keeps beating them up over and over and drives them deeper into humiliation and shame and defeat and discouragement. And saying, you will never, ever be honored. You'll never be admired. You'll never be revered. You'll never be respected. You'll never have a good reputation. And of course, the enemy wants you to believe that. I love the fact knowing that it says if we confess, he will forgive all of our sin. He forgives even our hidden sins, it says. And, 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 and he removes the guilt of my sin, the weight of my sin, the weight that causes that ashamed feeling that pushes me down and causes me to live in isolation and secret. 
But men, as you break out of the silence and confess honestly, I've blown it. Even part of this crazy check-in is it's hard to say sometimes, I'm a recovering sex addict on my journey to freedom by the help of God. Yeah, when do we have to quit saying that? Well, listen, I'm a recovering sex addict. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a recovering ashamed addict. I used to live coward under my guilt and my behavior that was dishonored to God. And, and I want to live in freedom and open, not in embarrassment and dishonor, humiliation, because I'm going to deal with my wrong behavior. Now it's a journey. We, we, we fall back and forth. We make mistakes. We, we, we blow it. We relapse. And in that relapse, there's a sense of failure. There's a sense of guilt. There is guilt because we did something wrong. And guilt causes us to come back to the Lord or it causes us to go deeper in our shame. And sometimes we have a relapse. We even, we even lie about a relapse because we want to stay in the revered category. We want to stay respected. We don't want to be humiliated because a relapse is hard to say. But a man who fears the Lord will continue to seek the Lord, will continue to seek the Lord. He'll continue to seek the Lord and do what God wants and will confess our sin to the Lord. I love what it says in Psalm 32. It says, blessed or happy and free, deeply happy and free. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven, whose transgressions are covered over. Forgiven. I'm grateful for God's forgiveness because his forgiveness causes me to come out from under my shame, causes me to come out from under my guilt. I, I, I don't have that burden on my back of, uh, you're a mess, you're a failure, you're a cheat, you're a liar, you're an addict, you're despicable. And the enemy keeps attacking and attacking and attacking. I love what it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 11, that, that we, the believers and followers of Jesus, we defeat the enemy by the blood of the lamb, what Jesus has done for us, and the word of our testimony. I am forgiven. Jesus has forgiven me. He's removed the guilt of my sin. I, 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 I can walk in freedom. I, I'm not disgraced because he is for, it's his righteousness. It's not mine. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not in my own strength. I need Jesus. I want to share with you a number of scripture that address this idea of shame. And uh, if you quick with your, your Bibles, you can follow along with me. But I'm going to read them, and, uh, and they're very encouraging. I'm going to read, first of all, from Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3, and especially verse 7 from Isaiah 61. Listen to this. Gentlemen, Isaiah said this in a nation that was really messed up, and our nation is very messed up. But it says this in Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, and verse 7. It says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me. Gentlemen, he's anointed you and I to pray, proclaim good news to the poor and those other men who are addicted. He sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to bind up, to strengthen those who are brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to those captive by this, and the release from darkness for those prisoners. Well, guys, when we're in our addiction and we're going downhill fast, it is dark. There's no freedom. We are busted up inside. But as we realize that the Lord is upon us, he's appointed us to help bind up the broken heart, to proclaim freedom to the captives and release from darkness those who are imprisoned by that and to proclaim the year of God's favor. God's favor is on you. You see, that's the opposite, the very opposite of shame. God's favor is on you. He's caused us to comfort those who mourn. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be both grit and grace. We're going to comfort those guys that struggle. And, 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 and it's beautiful. We're going to provide for those who grieve because of their sin. We're going we're gonna to band around them. We're going we're gonna to stand with one another. Not condone the wrong behavior ever, but to call the man out of the darkness into the light and say, come on, let's keep going. Just like a wounded soldier in the field of battle, there's one man on one side and one man on the other, and they pick him up. And even though his feet are dragging, come on, we're getting to safety. We're not leaving you behind. It goes on to say, we will bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Think about it. A crown of beauty is not disgrace. 
It's not embarrassment. It's not ashamed. It's not dishonor. It's not humiliation. A crown of beauty instead of ashes. Ashes is darkness and death and burning and, and, and but there's no ashes and mourning. The oil of joy where you put this lotion on your face and you get ready to go out and, and walk with pride like you're going to walk down an aisle to get your bride. But an oil of joy instead of mourning. A garment of praise. God is the difference. God is the difference. A garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Oh my goodness. You recognize the spirit of despair that's so connected with being ashamed. You failed again. You blew it again. Don't tell anybody. Oh, you're embarrassed. You feel the despair of your failure. But God wants to give us this garment of praise. He makes a difference. I will come back to him. I will keep following him instead of that spirit of despair. And then they will be called, love this, oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his displendor. Around here, we, we see more commonly, like if you go to Stanley Park, those huge pine trees that are just massive. Maybe there's some of those huge cedar trees that are just massive. We don't see as much the oak trees. But when they use the illustration of oak trees, if you know anything about woods, and I love woods, oak is a very hard wood. It's a very dense wood. It's not like the pines and the cedars, which are, are softer wood. But, but so when it talks about oaks of righteousness, it's like those massive trees we see in Stanley Park, but, but they're made out of something even solid. They're oak, solid oak. And you will be called oaks of righteousness, men. And it says, and this planting of the Lord becoming this oak of righteousness will be for the display of, of his splendor. Not only will I not be ashamed of my life, but my life will be a display. Look at that. There's a display over there. That's, that's those men of regroup. I recognize those men. Just like those guys who spoke a couple weeks ago, a thousand days clean. They were a display of God's splendor. They didn't walk around going, hey, look at me. Look at what I've done. Not one of them. They all talked about staying humble. You could hear it in their voices. It wasn't about me. They were displaying God's splendor. And, and, and so like a display, these, these oaks of righteousness start to stand up in the culture and say, God can help you. He's helped me. If you haven't watched Chris's story on video, Chris opened up about his addiction on video. He talked about it. And what happens is it's so powerful because as Chris continues to trust the Lord, he becomes an oak of righteousness. He, instead of being ashamed all those years where he kept the secret and left, lived under that shame and guilt and, and embarrassment and, and disgrace in his heart, there's freedom now because he's walking to honor the Lord, not in perfection, but in humility. And he's becoming an oak of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And now, this is the one I'm excited about. You thought I was excited already. Shut up and listen. Verse 7 says this, instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. So you will inherit a double portion of your land and everlasting joy will be yours. So instead of the shame, because of the way you trust God and let him work in you to become this oak of righteousness, a display of his splendor, instead of the shame, You'll receive this double portion of respect, this no more disgrace, but, but an inheritance. And by the way, when you receive an inheritance, that means you're a son. You're a beloved son. You're not cut out of the inheritance like the disgraced son. You receive this double portion of inheritance and everlasting joy. Oh, my goodness. When you continue to deal with your shame and deal with your guilt and keep coming back to the Lord and confess your sin, this sense of peace and joy comes. What a difference. Let me read Psalm 22. Now I have just a variety of verses here that talk about shame. Lord, you are enthroned as the Holy One. 
you are the one that we choose to praise, Israel praises. In your ancestors put their trust. They trusted in you and you delivered them from our addiction. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. They cried out and were saved. Eric, you did that last September. Remember that. You cried out to the Lord and he delivered you. You were saved. And you see, in, in, in Jesus we trust and we will not be put to shame, it says in Psalm 22, verse 5. Listen to Psalm 25. I'm going to read verses 1 to 11, especially focusing on verse 3. In you, Lord, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemy, my addiction, triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. So Jesus, I come back over and over again, and I will put my hope in you. I will trust in you. I will surrender to you. God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. I will seek you. I will seek you. Because whoever hopes in you, puts their hope in you, will not be put to shame. But shame comes to those who are treacherous without cause, it says. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, because you are God, my Savior. My hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and your love, for they are of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my rebellious ways, okay? Do not remember the sins of my youth. Most of you know that your addiction started back when you were youth. 12, 13, 14, you got going into this addiction. It just took hold of you. And, and, the, and the psalmist says so beautifully, Jesus, thank you that you don't remember my, the sins of my youth and all my rebellious ways. But according to your love, remember me. According to your love, you love me. You've got a plan for me. And in your love, that's how he seals us. He sees us. Matter of fact, it's so beautiful because it says that, that my name is written on his hand. And, and just like I've put here, my name, is this is like God's hand. And he says, I love you so much. I think about you all the time. Look at you. Hands, your name is here. Eric, your name is on my hand. Brian, Chris, Selvam, look, look, your name is on my hand. Because you see, he remembers this because of his love, according to his love, not according to our sins. Thank you, Lord. We'll hope in you because we won't be put to shame when we do. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in their ways. He guides the humble to what is right. And he teaches them his ways. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful to those who keep the demands of his covenant. And for the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. It's so beautiful to know that as we seek him, we won't be put to shame. Psalm 25, verse 20 says this, guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you, refuge in Jesus. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Delivered me in your righteousness. Psalm 31, verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 5. Those who looked to God, those who look to Jesus are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Um, Victor, I'm going to tell a story about my work with you. Kill me later if you want. But when I first started working with Victor, he would sit in my office and his head would be down. He wouldn't look at me when I talked to him. He wouldn't look up. But what happens is when scripture says when we're forgiven, he's the lifter of our head. He, 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 he forgives. And, and those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame because I look to Jesus. He forgives my sin. He removes the guilt of my sin where I was locked in the shame and the shame is lifted. I don't feel ashamed anymore because Jesus has forgiven me. I love that from Psalm 34 verse 5. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame because we keep looking to him over and over again. Proverbs gives a warning in 13 verse 18. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame. Okay, guys? 
the discipline of saying yes to the Lord, the discipline to continue to surrender to the Lord, the discipline to do the program, the discipline to hear others, let others speak into your life and be accountable. But whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame. But whoever heeds correction is honored. Hey, guys, help me out here. I'm struggling, guys. You know, you're triggered. So you, you, you say, hey, guys, you know, on regroup or whatever, our tribe, whatever, you, you, you say, hey, guys, I'm struggling. You know, or my wife's away, pray for me. Or, or I'm having a tough day, you know, pray for me. And so when you receive correction, you'll be honored. Oh, Isaiah 50, verse 7, this. And you know, I'm going to get fired up about this one. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Okay? Because remember, disgrace, humiliation, ashamed, right? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You're my sovereign Lord. And the sovereign Lord, the God who's over all, he helps me. And I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I set my face like flint. You understand flint is the what an arrowhead is made of. And a flint is something that is really hard, and it, it cuts through things. You, you'll throw a, a, a spear with flint on the end. It'll stick into a tree. You shoot an arrow with a flint arrowhead on it, and it goes right through a person. Because flint is something that is hard. It's got an edge to it. And when it says, I set my face like flint, it means I will defeat this dang addiction. Because the sovereign Lord will help me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I will set my face like flint. And I know I will not be put to shame. If you press into Jesus, if you go on to Jesus, if you humble yourself, men, you've got to humble yourself. You've got to admit your wrongs. You've got to quit making excuses. Don't be a stupid 14-year-old adolescent in how you react. A lot of you don't understand my problem. This is hard for me. This is really, uh, I, it's her fault. Oh, grow up, you bunch of whiners. Accept the fact that you're responsible for your choices. Your anger is your issue, not her fault. Your addiction is your addiction. If she would do this, then I wouldn't have this problem. Shut up. It's not the way it is. You got to own it. You got to own it. And whoever disregards discipline and challenges like this will come to poverty and shame. But whoever heeds correction will be honored. And the sovereign Lord in Isaiah 57 helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I will set my face like flint. And I know that I will not be put to shame. Romans chapter 9 verse 33 says this. As it is written, see, I lay in Zion a stone that causes people to, to, to stumble. In a rock that makes men fall. But the one who believes in him will not be put to shame. Jesus, we're going to keep trusting you. We're going to keep trusting you. The scripture says, Romans 10, 11, quoting the Old Testament again, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Never be put to shame. Gentlemen, shame comes from our awareness of our wrong behavior. We confess our sin. We receive the freedom from the guilt of our sin. The sense of shame is lifted. And we walk surrendered, trusting God day to day. Maybe one of the best verses that will really bring to clarity this is in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You know it, men. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, men. Trust the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. Don't depend on yourself and all that you think. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, put him first. In all your ways, seek him like flint. I will do this. And he will direct my path. He will help me beyond this challenge. So today, we want to talk about our shame and dealing with our shame. And understand that, that, that we got to come to the Lord asking for forgiveness. And, and, and he separates our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. And, and then he removes the guilt of my sin and my wrong behavior because he covers me with his righteousness. And then he removes the shame, the shame that I felt for my wrong behavior. He removes my shame because the guilt is removed. Seek the Lord with all your heart. 
surrender to him and give him your sense of shame and he will make you that oak of righteousness. Amen.